Do you want to visit a campground where you can stand by the lake and take in the beautiful mountain views? And see lots of deer? Lots of deer. I'm Jimmy. And I'm Lisa. The kids are all grown up and it's our turn to have fun. So now you'll find us camping. Yes, you will. Today we're going to take a look at the Thousand Trails Park in Medina Lake, Texas. We'd never been there, so we weren't sure what to expect, and it was a little off the beaten path, but that was okay. It was right along our route when we were passing through Texas. Have you ever been to Medina Lake Campground? If so, comment below and let us know what you think. The check-in process was a little different at Medina Lake. Typically, at the Thousand Trails parks that we have been to, you stop at the guard shack and they direct you where to go to pull up to the office and so forth. This one, there were signs out front that told you to stop before the guard shack and pull down into the office so they could direct you. You got it. We missed the sign. We've put a picture here of the sign so that when you pull in, you're sure not to miss it. When you pull through the gate of the campground, you can see this big old house sitting up on the hill overlooks the entrance to the campground. It's right when you pull into Section A. So I got out and took a look at it. It's called the Speddle Riverside House. It was built before 1881 by John Speddle Jr. and was built on the east bank of the Medina River. They, of course, then built a dam, which was completed in 1912, and the house had to be moved or it would have been flooded because of where it was sitting. So it was moved here, and then once the campground was built, they used the house for the sales office or a recreation area to hold meetings. Um, but that was back in the 70s. I'm not sure when they quit using it, but sometime after that. And you can tell by the looks of the house, it's deteriorating pretty badly, which is really sad for this piece of history to be falling apart. As we pull into Section A, just past the Spettle House, they have us parked here because it's a pull-through site, so it's easy to get in and out since we're only here for a night. Over to the right, you'll see the bathhouse, the pool, the hot tub, and the laundry facilities. Also, a basketball court, and there is an old barn there on the property. We're going to go ahead and do a drive-through of Section A, kind of show you all the sites that are here available in this area. But first, we must stop for... There's a deer straight across the road. I don't know if you can see them or not. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, look at him. There's a big buck. Hold on, we gotta take a picture. Those are two bucks. Mm -hmm. Take your GoPro out there. Sorry for the distraction, everyone, and I hope you can get to see the deer in the video. Uh, as we proceed through Section A, everything on the right are back ends. The sites to the left are pull throughs. Uh, section A is water and electric only. As we round the corner, we're going to enter into Section L, which is just one strip across the back side of Section A. Uh, these are all full hookup sites, so they're just kind of tucked away there on the end. We're going to pull up here to the bathhouse in Section A and do a little walk through so we can see the condition of the buildings, how clean the facilities are, and so forth. So the buildings here seem to be in pretty good shape anyway. Everything seems to be, um, like I guess the building itself is a bit older, but it's all in great shape and freshly painted. And everything looks really clean. Which at the end of the day, let's be real, that's what's important. As we're finishing our drive through of Section A, please comment below and let me know what's important to you when looking for a campground. Do you want something close to the highway? Are you looking for a full hookup? Is a pull through important? Are the clean bathhouses important? Is it more important to be able to get in and out of the site easily? Let me know what's important to you. Now as we pull into section R, we're going to drive through this section and take a look at these sites here. They are all water, electric, sewer, 
The map says full hookups. It doesn't specify 50 amp like section L did. So I'm assuming that full hookup in this section means that they are 30 amp sites. That's not a guarantee, but on the map in section L, it said full hookups 50 amp. So that's what I'm going to go with. As we get to the exit down here to the R section R, you'll notice there is one little cabin on the corner. I'm not sure why it's the only one here. Maybe there's plans to put some more in, but for now it is the only cabin in this section. Uh, once we get out on the main road, the speed limit is going to be 15 between section R and section F. This is the only place in the park where the speed limit is over five miles per hour. Another rule that they were very specific about going over when we checked in. We've now made it to Falcon Perch, Section F. Section F is a mixture of full hookup sites, 50 amp sites, a couple of water and electric only, and several cabins. As you see as we drive through, Section F is going to be on the left. Medina Lake is going to be on the right. Also on the right was a parking area and a picnic area. So if you want to just drive down in your truck, car, or even golf cart and park and have a picnic down by the lake, you could certainly do so. There were picnic tables up closer to the parking area as well as down by the water. It was a very beautiful site there to be um, kind of a rocky um, lakeside there with mountains off in the distance. And it was a little chilly the day we were there. So of course there was no one swimming. I would imagine in the summertime though, that people would be in the water swimming, maybe even fishing. Although it is a little chilly here in January with the wind blowing off the lake, I would be willing to bet that in the middle of the summertime, Falcon Perch or Section F is the place people are trying to get. You can be right here across from the lake. The kids have easy access, whether it be on a bicycle or by foot. And oh, let's not forget the pets. The dogs have a place to go to. Here's the dog park. Okay. Dog park. Roof, roof. And once you've taken the dogs and worn them out at the dog park, next up on the list is to take the kids just a little bit down the road here between the street and the lake and check out the playground for all ages. I think that was more like F for fun. <laughs> Just had to take a little break because who doesn't like a slide? Now that we took our break and went down the slide, we're going to go on down to the boat dock or boat launching area. Whether you have a boat, a kayak, a jet ski, and you need a place to get in the water, this is where you're going to come. If you don't have a watercraft and you just want to fish, there's also a pier here that you can come and fish off of. Next section on our list is Buffalo Cove, Section B. These sites are all right on the point here. They all have water view or most of them back right up to the water. However, they're only water and electric. So would it be worth it to you to not have that sewer hookup to have that great water view? Comment below and let us know because different things are important to different people. The next section we're going to come up on is Coyote Corner, Section C. These sites are also water and electric only, with the exception of three full hookup sites right on the end. Again, they're right on the water, either on the water or have a great water view. So maybe it would be worth it to give up that sewer connection. Maybe you're only here for the weekend and don't feel like you need the sewer. The water and electric's all you need. Let us know what is most important to you, the view and being close to the water or having that sewer connection. We were in section A, but since we were just there for one night, the sewer wasn't important to us. We didn't have the great water view, but we wanted easy in and out and somewhere that we wouldn't disturb others and we were trying to get up early the next morning and hit the road. As we come up on the activity center here, you're going to notice the mini golf is right between section C and the activity center. Then as we park and get out and walk around, Along the back of the building is the basketball court, the volleyball court. And then we get to the actual building itself, which is currently um, having some work done, so it's not open. But it's a standard Thousand Trails activity center, which is the building and then the covered pavilion on one end. 
As we exit and head back to the truck, we also notice that there is a huge twister painted on the ground. And of course you can't play twister without a spinner, but no worries, they also have one of those that's laying out here on the concrete made out of some sort of tin so that it's safe to be left outdoors. And just as we start to head back to our camper, we come across this small herd of deer just standing in the parking area. You can tell they're used to being fed, so I guess that's why they're trying to not have people feed them now. But they're so pretty to just stop and watch them for a minute. As we leave, we're going to pass the last few things here at the activity center, which is going to be the swings, the slide, the horseshoe pits, and the disc golf. All in all, I'd say they have quite a variety of activities to take part in here at Medina Lake. Now that we're back over in Section A where we're staying, I'm going to do a quick peek into the ladies' restroom, which is right here beside the pool. Then we're going to go out and check out the pool. I'm pretty sure the pool is still open. It was just too chilly for anybody to be in it this evening. It still appeared to be open, lights on, and clean. Then over in the corner by the pool is the hot tub, which was also very well lit and I'm sure is still open, just nobody was enjoying it. Next is the laundry facility, where it's $1.75 to wash a load of clothes, $1.50 to dry them. How important is the laundry facility to you when you're camping? Do you have washer and dryer in your rig or do you use the facilities at the campground? Please comment below and let me know. Medina Lake was a huge campground. Multiple sections, some with mountain views, some with lake views, most all of them with wildlife. They had back-end sites, pull-through sites, full hookups, water and electric only. It really just depended on what you were looking for. They had lots of activities at the activity center and a nice pool and hot tub. All the bathhouses and laundry facilities, the pool, the hot tub, everything was, in very, was very clean and well kept, well painted. Everything seemed very up to date and the staff there was super friendly. Don't forget all about the deer. Is Medina Lake Thousand Trails Park in Texas a place we would return to? Absolutely, but we would definitely want to stay a little longer than we did this time. Safe travels everyone.